all languages are very useful. Um, none of that, none of them is, uh, you know, some people said that, uh, I'm just going to give you an example. Uh, some people said that English is the most uh, important language, but for me, it is not the most important language. All of them are important. None of them is better than another. Okay, thank you so much for joining me um, on the Dreaming English channel. So if you want to start by introducing yourself, your name and your country, where you're from. Okay, thank you so much for this uh, chance, Rochelle. Um, this is on some, I am Anselm from Mozambique. Uh, Mozambique is a Portuguese speaking country located in Africa. Um, Mozambique is a country that speaks Portuguese because it was colonized by Portugal and European country. Uh, but uh, we still have more languages that are being spoken. Uh, but uh, we call them local languages, indigenous languages. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but uh, the country is linked by only one language, which is Portuguese. Okay, yes, and uh, I would like to mention my age. I am quite 27 years old. Oh, okay. Um, well, thank you. I, I have never actually met anybody from Mozambique. I, I actually work in a high school where I have a good number of students from African countries, but never from Mozambique. I've had them mainly from Ghana. I think a couple from South Africa, Tanzania, maybe one. I've had some from Kenya, but never from Mozambique. So I didn't actually know a lot about Mozambique. I looked at it on the map this morning and did notice. And I think you told me before that you speak Portuguese. And I do know that a number of the countries were colonies of either Britain or Spain or Portugal. So that explains why that, that unifying language as my other students will have, like my students from Ghana, often they have so many Ghanaian languages, but their, their, their language that unites the country that everyone speaks is English. So thank you for explaining that because I myself, and I'm sure many others don't know a lot about these things. I'd like to learn more about your country. So like if I was ever to go to Mozambique, what are the places, the must-see places to see? Mozambique is a country, is a beautiful country, uh, but it's not a developed country. It is still under the development, uh, but uh, it has so many beautiful places and the people uh, to are uh, very beautiful. And uh, they have, I mean, they're full of, of uh, hospitality, they are kind. Uh, but the places that you can visit, if you come to Mozambique, I mean, we have uh, beaches. Uh, Mozambique is one of the countries with uh, beautiful beaches and men beaches. And uh, we have a wildlife, a beautiful game reserves and parks. And uh, we have um, a delicious foods, beautiful foods. And uh, what? Uh, we also have our own products, but uh, I'm talking about clothes that uh, made here in Mozambique. I'm gonna talk about, I'm just going to give you an example of kapulana. A kapulana is a type of, of um, a fabric that is made here in Mozambique. But uh, we also have other countries that uh, produce or they make this kind of fabric. Um, but uh, it's only used by women to wrap up the, how can I say, uh, they use like, how, how do you call it? Uh, I'm just going to say in Portuguese, we call it fralda. It's a type of, uh, we use it to wrap up a baby when she's still, yeah, when she or he is still little. Oh, okay. It's like in English, we will call that swaddling the baby. You're like wrapping the baby and wrapping the arms and legs. So that way, when they're sleeping, they don't just do this and wake themselves up and start of them. We call that swaddling the baby. So they make this fabric to swaddle the baby, to like wrap up the baby so it's comfortable. Okay, well, okay, well, uh, they don't wrap up the, the whole body. They just wrap up the, 
the 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 how do you call it? Um, okay, you, I think you call it nappy, something like that in English. Nappy. I don't. Oh, oh okay, well. nappy. The, that is well. um in the United States, it's called diaper. Nappy is in UK. Okay, so it's the diaper. The diaper. All right. Ex I, exactly. Now exactly. I understand. Okay, that's different from the swaddle. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, uh, so women, women use this kind of this kind of fabric to wrap up the babies, um, especially those who don't have, um, like, uh, they are they don't have enough. Uh, I mean, uh, how can I say, enough uh, financial 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 capacity. Right. Right. Yeah. So they use this. Yeah, so they, they use this kind of product in order to wrap up their babies. Okay. And uh, we have, but sometimes we use it to make clothes like t-shirts, trousers, yeah, uh, shorts, and also to uh, make wallets. Yeah, but it's also being used in other countries. Uh, the those countries uh, located like they, how do you call it? We call it sub-Saharan countries. And so I, I noticed that like you said you had a lot of beaches there. It's like on the the east coast of Africa, right? The east coast. Mozambique seems to be like the southern east coast, I think. I looked on the map earlier before we spoke. And and I you actually sent me some pictures of, or you sent me two pictures, one of an elephant and one of a giraffe. Is that something you would normally see? Or is it like only if you go off to the like the like the wildlife reserves yeah correct uh, mozambique is located along the coast uh east coast uh from i'm just going to i, I would say i'm um, a town where i reside is located um, next to the beach the indian ocean so from a town up to the beach is about 30 kilometers okay yeah so about the pic the pictures that I sent you uh, this afternoon, if I'm not mistaken, I think I sent you this this afternoon. I got a twig. Um, I'm working I'm working for a, a place that is responsible for the protection of the wildlife and fight against poaching, which yeah yeah that we call legal hunting. So uh, I didn't take like uh, I, how can I say I got them a twig. You understand? Okay. So, um, yes. Uh, well, elephants or wildlife is not like the, the wild animals are not found anywhere like in the big cities. No. Uh, there are proper places. Yeah. Yeah. There are proper places where you can find these kind of animals. Yeah. Where they are being uh, protected, uh, not to be killed, not to be, um, yeah, not to be killed by. Uh, by illegal hunters. Okay, in our reserves and parks, we have uh, a plant of animals, many, many, many types of animals. I'm just going to mention a few. Okay. Uh, we have we have elephants, giraffes, lions, wild dogs that we also call hunting dogs. We have uh, hyenas. We have uh, kudu. Uh, kudu is a kind of animal that um we call it african antelope okay yes and uh, we have uh, crocodiles a crocodile live in water so since we have a uh, pens or dams inside the reserve uh sometimes you can see them inside the water and those pens that we have inside the reserve you understand? oh okay are they so they're in are they made so that the crocodiles can't get out of that area? Okay, uh, pens, the pens or dams are inside the reserve. Okay. So they are, li yeah, so the crocodiles are living inside the dams that are located uh, inside the reserve. You got it. Okay, okay. Yes. So you work, you worked at, you work for, is it a government agency or an agency to protect the wildlife? It's a it's a private company, uh, but it's being yeah that is being managed by South African people. Do you work out in the nature? Like what what do you what is your job? Um, I'm working like uh, as I'm sorry I'm working as a radio operator, 
I deal with uh, communication. Uh, I'm glad that <laughs> I'm glad that uh, I I am working with uh, the English language because because uh, uh, um, how can I say the the the, the managers um, the managers of the company are from the the Republic of South Africa. You understand? Right, right. Yeah. So okay. So everything uh, depends on the English language. It doesn't depend on the Portuguese language. But we also, yeah, but we also use uh, the Portuguese language and um, the other languages that are being spoken in Mozambique in order to facilitate um, in communication among ourselves inside the reserve. Um, so when, how, how can I say, I'm a radio operator. I am in the sector, I'm in the security sector, but we also have other people, other staff, like, um, Housekeepers, scouts, yeah, that we call rangers. Rangers, okay. Yeah, yeah rangers. So yeah, so I stay um, on the same spot, like a building. We we'll call it control room. You understand? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we we'll call yeah we we'll call it control room. So when those scouts are on the ground um, for patrol and. Uh, looking for the people who might have ended to hunt illegal. So they report everything to us and we transmit that information to the managers using uh, some platforms that we have. Oh, okay. Yes, and also, yeah, yes. And also uh, log data collected. Okay, so you, you type uh, it. That have been collected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we type it and submit. Yeah, yeah, we type it and we submit. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the proper platforms. You have a little one there. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a little boy little that is boy. coming to see me. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I have two children. Mine mine are not little anymore, but I recognize the sound of a little one. My children, my daughter oh, okay. is Thank thirteen, so. and my son is now nineteen, so they're no not little anymore. Ah, okay, great. Okay. All right, so let's see. We learned that there's like a lot of beautiful beaches there, that your country is still in, in development, that Portuguese is the main language, that is the, everybody communicates in Portuguese, but you have some indigenous languages there. Do you speak any of those indigenous languages? Of course, I speak one that I would call it Shangana, but it's also being spoken in South Africa. Uh, in, a, in a province that is located in South Africa that is bordering Mozambique. Oh, okay. All right. So, so, um, so actually that, that also brings up the fact like, like, so you speak Portuguese and English and what was the name of the language that is? Shangan. Shadan, Shadan. So at least three languages, I think. And Spanish. You speak Spanish very well, I believe, um, because I've heard you speak Spanish and that's how I met you in the English Spanish group. So already you're like, a, you're a polygot right there, which is something that I would love to be eventually speaking at least four languages. Amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, actually, I don't speak, I, I, I don't speak Spanish. I'm just uh, trying, I knew, I mean, I know um, a little bit of uh, expressions. Uh, I'm being taught by Isabel from Spain. Right. Yeah, right. but I still have, yes, I'm still being taught by Isabel. That's by the fact that it's being a little bit complicated for me and for her uh, since we are using WhatsApp, you know, uh, and we don't, you know, practice so often due to, um, um, you know, our schedules. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yes, but uh, yeah, but I still have some other people that I've practiced with from uh, Spanish speaking countries and uh, others who are not from speaking uh, from non Spanish speaking countries. Okay. And do you find, yes. I, 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 do you find that the Spanish is easier because of the Portuguese? They're, they're related languages. Of course. Uh, I think um, Spanish is, uh, is easier than English because there's uh, a bit of similarity between Spanish and the Portuguese language. Yeah, by now, <laughs> yeah, I see a bit of a similarity between these two languages. But I love English. I love English so much. 
I mean, English definitely is useful. It's like, I think the most common language and then Spanish and then Chinese. So that would be like, for me, I'm learning Spanish and I want to learn another language. I'm actually, I was thinking about Italian or something, but I'm actually think, rethinking it and thinking about learning Portuguese one, because it's more related, but two, because it would be more useful for me. Cause in my school that I work in, there are a lot of people coming from Brazil. So Portuguese would be more useful for me to learn than Italian. There are really no Italians coming into the school. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe I will, with my, my next language that I might start working on might be Portuguese. Oh, wow. So amazing. And that is the question that I wanted to ask you. Uh, I wanted to ask you, but you have uh, responded already. I wanted to ask you if uh, you still have a desire to learn the Portuguese language, uh, but you have um, satisfied my doubt or my question. Right, yeah. I was actually... Yeah thinking of um, learning other languages, but just recently I decided that I think Portuguese would be the most useful language to, and similar. So it would be easier for me to learn because I pretty, I'm pretty, I'm probably at intermediate level in Spanish. So I think it would be easier because it's a related language and more useful. Yeah, of course. Uh, actually, all languages are very useful. Um, none of that, none of them is, uh, you know, some people said that, uh, I'm just going to give you an example. Uh, some people said that English is the most uh, important language, but for me, it is not the most important language. All of them are important. None of them is better than another. Oh, right. Yeah. And that's not at all what I mean. What I mean is that in my work, it would be more useful because I have people coming from Brazil that do not speak any English. And so it would be more useful to me in my work, but not more important. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's why that's why I'm planning to learn French and I'm planning to, I mean, I'm learning Spanish. And uh, after Spanish, I think I'm going to tag uh, French uh, to avoid these things of carrying a translator on my shoulder. When I visit, for example, I visit a French speaking country. <laughs> so I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to carry anyone when I visit a place that doesn't speak uh, my language portuguese for example so yes yeah absolutely so all right so um i wonder you told me a little bit about the history of your your country you told me places to visit different wildlife i would see there um is there anything else you'd like to share with me about your country um i, I would like to hear a question oh, I, I would like to hear you asking about the languages, the number of languages that are being spoken in Mozambique. Okay, how many languages are spoken in Mozambique? <laughs> okay, uh, we have um, approximately 30 languages. That, yes. that's amazing. Uh, yeah, yes, Mozambique is made up of 10, I mean, 10 provinces. Um, but the map has 10 provinces, but politically it has 11 provinces. Oh, okay. So each, yes, so each province has got approximately two or three languages. Yeah, so in order to, if for example, I, I live in Gaza province next to the capital state of the country. So if I visit, uh, so if I visit the, 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 the northern provinces or the central provinces, I have to use the Portuguese language for better communication and for better understanding because I don't speak their languages and they don't speak mine either. You understand? Right, right. No, I just was like similar to my students that are from Ghana that there are, I don't know how many languages, but maybe it's something like 30 different languages. And it's the unifying language of English that they can speak to each other. But also, I was also amazed that numerous people speak many of these different indigenous languages too. Is that the, is that, is that the case too as well in, in Mozambique that people speak numerous of these indigenous languages? Yes, uh, it is the same thing that happens in Mozambique. Uh, but these languages are not being taught in schools. Uh, we here, we use the Portuguese language for education. We don't speak, I mean, we don't use the indigenous languages. You know what I find yes. interesting and, and I'm hoping that this might be something that happens in the future is that 
I don't know if you use the app called Dilingo. No, I don't. Okay. I don't, well, but, anyway, uh, yes. it's an amazing app and it was created by somebody from Guatemala that immigrated to the U.S. And one of the things that the app is doing is it's actually creating language lessons or lang like to, for, for languages like indigenous languages that don't have any sort of lessons. So in a way to kind of like preserve those languages, like as you said, those aren't being taught in the schools. So it's just oral and to in a way to preserve it. So I know that they're, they're, they're preserving some indigenous, indigenous languages from Alaska and other indigenous languages. So I, I wonder if that might be something that happens in the future, because as you said, Portuguese is what's taught in the school, but not these 30 some indigenous languages. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, it is not uh, these languages, the indigenous languages are not being taught in Mozambique. But I don't know why they are not being taught in schools. I wonder. And I believe that sooner or later, because of that, are not being introduced at school, they're going to uh, disappear. Right. And that's the whole thing is like a way to preserve them by by creating some sort of lessons and teaching them to preserve those languages so they don't disappear because there was, I don't know how many languages and now we're down to, I don't know, maybe there's 200 some, I don't even know exactly, but languages are disappearing. So as a way to try to, try to preserve them, you know, to try to find some ways to, to, I don't know, create lessons and try to teach them to the next generation so they don't disappear. Oh, of course. Uh, what uh, What is being done now that the government, the Ministry of Education, as uh, as they started to do, is to teach the uh, little children, uh, those, but especially those who are living in rural areas. So they decided the the the, the grade one, grade two, and three, if I'm in, I'm not mistaken, uh, they start to learn not in Portuguese. They learn in their indigenous languages. Oh, okay. So, uh, yes. So when they pass a grade three um, to the next level or to the next grade, they are being introduced to Portuguese language. Yeah, I think you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They call it in Portuguese, we call it uh, primeiro ano, first, first year of learning the language. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if, yeah, but but this happens when they don't speak uh, the language of that country. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For example, when uh, somebody gets a scholarship from Mozambique to study in, um, let's say, in China or India, um, they they are put in a class where they will be able to learn the language spoken in India or in China. Okay, so do you want to ask me a couple more questions before we wrap up then? Um, okay, yes, I would like to ask you, you, you told me that you are learning Spanish. Um, so I would like to ask you, when did you start to learn the Spanish languages and I mean the, the Spanish language and uh, the challenges that you went through or you go through uh, this journey? Okay, so that's a good question. I've been learning for a really long time. I first started learning in high school and it was mostly book and grammar, not speaking. And then I went on and studied in college and then I stopped and I stopped for like more than 10 years. And I started again, I, I guess I started again, maybe like five or seven years ago, but challenges I found was pronouncing the language because it's much different the vowels are different in English. We have lots of things that we either pronounce or we don't pronounce in Spanish. You pronounce everything except that H challenges. I found, I, I think what I, when I finally started to feel like I was learning was when I finally had the opportunity to listen a lot. Uh, I started learning before the internet, put things in context. My son is 19. So I started learning like way before there was like typewriters in my school and books. There was no internet. So with the internet now, I can listen, I can watch people speak and listen. And that has really helped me with being able to develop an ear for the language. Because before studying grammar, I was studying, taking a test and forgetting. 
studying, taking a test and forgetting. And I was not learning how to speak and pronounce the language. So I think those are my challenges that I had, but what's working now is something that I, that I've not come up with, but it's a process called comprehensible input where you listen, listen, listen to a lot of things that are understandable. Video helps because the video and the pictures and the movements and seeing people's face and expressions can help under, you understand the language. And once I started to get to that point that I could understand it, then I would just listen with my headset. Um, I put something inside my phone and use my headset to be able to listen to it while I'm walking, while I'm doing other things. So now I can listen to news and I can listen to all kinds of things. So that's what's really helped because I think for me anyway, studying grammar lessons does not work. For me, it's watching and listening to a lot of things that are very simple at first and then moving up to more, more harder and harder things, right? And then really starting to develop that ear and understanding it just the way that babies learn, right? Babies don't learn from teaching grammar. You're not teaching a baby what a verb is and what a noun is. You're just talking to that baby and the baby's learning from watching you and from listening and from everything in the environment. And that's how I'm trying to learn Spanish now. And that's what's really working for me. And so I've been, it's for a very long time, but maybe a shorter time of doing something that actually works. Oh, Oh, very clear. You're very clear and to understand. But, and I think you, you used a great method. Now, I would like to ask you about this. Uh, between or oh, among all, okay, how can I say? Because uh, we have in language, in a language, we have listening skills, speaking skills, reading skills, and uh, writing skills. Uh, among all those, uh, how can I say, uh, or sections, I will put it this way. What did you find uh, difficult or you think it is the most difficult to learn or to catch? I think for me speaking, because at first you listening, developing that ear for the language, and then eventually you start reading and you're, you're reading the language. But when you are then taking that language and you're starting and even writing, writing, I can slow down and I can think what I'm writing. I can rewrite it. I can delete. I can cross out. But when you're speaking, you're having to think of everything in the moment and be able to recall the words and be able to conjugate the words and know whether it's got to be preterite or seer or star and all those things you're trying to think in your mind. While if it's on paper, it's slower. I can edit. I can think about what I'm writing. Reading, uh, reading is easier, I think, than writing because you're just reading it. You're reading it to understand. So I would say the speaking, and that's what has been the last thing that I've been able to start to master because of the fact that I think it's the hardest, actually. And often I think in language courses, they're really pushing you to speak, speak, speak fast. But I think if you start speaking too early, one is that you can develop problems with your pronunciation because maybe you started speaking before you really understood the pronunciation um two you don't have enough of an ear for the language to know the grammar structure and i'm talking about grammar structure from learning from listening to it not by learning oh the verb goes here and the noun goes there but by learning that oh if you said something backwards that you're gonna be like oh that doesn't sound right that you just know it doesn't sound right because you've heard so much of the language that you know that doesn't sound right and so I think the speaking comes last and it's something that you shouldn't rush into. And that comprehensive input method that I talked about, there are all kinds of things written, all kinds of YouTube videos that talk about it. And they talk about speaking as being one of the last things that you should do. And so it's not me, you know, it's a whole nother, you know, series of people researching this and writing about it. But I just found that that is, that's so true to me. Uh, great, uh, I understood. Um, I wanted to ask you, among all types of Spanish, uh, versions of Spanish, which one do you love the most? You, oh, different, you mean from different countries or different accents? Yeah, different countries. Okay. I guess I really like the Spanish 
probably Mexico. One of my favorite YouTubers, and he's very, I think Mexican Spanish is very understandable. Have you guessed who my favorite YouTuber is? Because you like, you're smiling. And he's like, he's like known. He goes, he's probably been, I don't know, um, Mozambique. He's been all over the place. So his name is um, Lucito. And he, wow. um, Lucito. So he's got like probably 40 million subscribers. And I'm sure if he hasn't been to Mozambique, he's probably going there because he's been to Tanzania. He's been to numerous um, African countries. He's been all around Asia. He goes all over the place. And, but his Spanish is very clear. And I find the, the Spanish from Mexico. It's Spanish from Mexico, Colombia, and Venezuela to be very clear, very they, they, they pronounce all of the letters. They, they're very articulate with the way that they speak. While in Argentina, then they kind of like use that show sound. Like if it's like, um, yo, ya, chamo, chamo, like that, putting that S sound and stuff. And then other countries, they leave off the ends of the words. Like Cuban Spanish is very hard to understand. So I guess my preference would be the most easiest. But I also try to talk to people and listen to people from all Spanish speaking countries so I can develop an ear. I still have a difficulty with the Cuban Spanish. That's very difficult for me to understand, but I can understand people from Argentina now. I practiced with people from like Isabel from Spain and I I practiced with people from numerous countries, Panama, um, Dominican Republic and all those. Oh wow, that's um that's a great Achievement. That's a great, yeah, that's a great achievement. Okay, uh, tell me this. You're from the United States. You were born in the United States. Yes. Have you ever been outside the country? Have you ever been to, uh, have you ever been outside the country? Yes, I have been to four countries. My first place went to was Canada, which at the time, all I needed to do was drive over the border and say I was born in the U.S. Now you need a passport. I have been, then I went, to, the next place I went to was Costa Rica. I went there when I was in college. Then I went to Finland, and the last place that I went to was Mexico. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll yeah, have I to. Saw. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll have to do this again sometime, sure, um, when we can both arrange the time. So thank you so much for, you know, speaking with me today, and I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm also glad to be here talking to you. 